us the pleasant days of late spring mean relaxation, sport and enjoyment as we forget our daily cares. For the forester, it means anxiety and added responsibility as his thoughts turn to the coming summer. The traditional enemy may attack without warning, reducing homes and townships to heaps of charred ruin and rubble, destroying thousands of acres of valuable forest and perhaps claiming a tragic sacrifice of human lives. 95% of forest fires are lit by the hand of man. The distorted mind of the firebug who deliberately fires the forest with motives of self-satisfaction or revenge. The hand of the careless holidaymaker who throws a lighted cigarette or burning match by the roadside or in the bush. These are only some who won't realize that in the forest matches are a menace. At forestry depots conveniently situated throughout the state, modern firefighting equipment has been stored throughout the winter months. Late spring finds this equipment undergoing thorough tests. These are trained men. They have just returned from a refresher course at the Commission's annual fire school. of the bush country, a highly trained firefighting organization will stand at the alert. But the forester is the backbone of this vast fire protection system. On his judgment and split-second decisions may rest the safety of his men, or perhaps the population of sawmills and townships. Fire protection warnings are prominently displayed in danger areas. Portable radios are checked and tested in the field. This vital communication must not fail. Fire protection reservoirs are built round natural springs. Dams are kept filled by runoff from the forest floor. Tangil Bren, Mount MacDonald, Stringer's Knob, Mount Beanac, Crossover, Lake Mountain, Gentle Annie, Sulky Hill and Mount Tanglefoot. Fire towers are manned all over the state. It's summer.
trying to foot look out. Doug here, Bob. Yes, Doug. Now, just what tomorrow is the weather for the tree, eh, Bob? Rising temperatures and uh, north wind. Fire risk is acute. The sun sets as red as fire. She'll be a stinker, all right. Well, uh, tomorrow's a standby day. I've got all the fire gear out on the road. And I want reports from you every 30 minutes tomorrow, Bob. Right, Doug. Good night. Good night, Bob. read by Lewis Miles. The forest fire that has been raging at Hardy's Creek near Trelangy since early this morning is now threatening lives and property. An official of the Forest Commission stated a few moments ago that all residents had been brought out of the danger area except two families living at a sawmill. Fears are held for their safety. A fire dugout is in the vicinity, but their fate is unknown. Further reports will be broadcast as they come to hand. And now... VL3AA to VL3CE. Come in, please. VL3CE calling VL3AA. Fire is now under control. Fire now under control. One member of forest staff seriously burned. Another injured. Both taken to Hillsville Bush Nursing Hospital. No other casualties in fire area. Over. Except for smouldering logs, the fire was out by the following Monday. As the water from the pumps hissed on the red ashes, the boys looked round at the fire-blackened trees, and no one spoke. So the tense days of summer draw slowly to a close. 
With the first rains of autumn, old mother nature clothes her forests in a blue mist of safety. On the tops of the hills, on the turreted cones, chief temples of thunder, the gale like a ghost in the middle watch moans gliding over and under. Deep in the forest, the lyrebird lays her solitary egg. Her mate scratches for grubs and worms. A cold winter sun filters into the wet forest. New growth is at its lowest ebb. Grey winter hath gone like a wearisome guest. And behold, for repayment, September comes in with the wind from the west and the spring in her raiment. These gaunt spectres, legacy of some past forest fire, rear their ugly heads to the blue skies of another spring. In their shadows, sturdy young mountain ash thrive in the moist earth. So nature provides her own replacement. Where the slow chemistry of nature is unable to reclothe the damaged earth, the risk of soil erosion, especially in catchment areas, is countered by hand-planted trees. The shattered trinity is restored, the rain cycle is renewed, and a young forest of great future potential is established. So nature's task is eased. In other areas, tiny eucalypts are sent out in metal cylinders for hand-planting. Orderly rows of trees are typical of a man-made forest. O oh, season of changes, of shadow and shine, September the splendid. My song hath no music to mingle with thine, and its burden is ended. But thou, being born of the winds and the sun, by mountain, by river, mayst lighten and listen and loiter and run with thy voices forever. September, October, November. Spring has run her brief span into summer. with you.